Hey, what's up guys, Victor here, and today we're gonna to be comparing three different limb lengthening methods to see which one reigns supreme. We have the traditional old school external fixators versus the internal nails versus the lengthening over nail, which is a hybrid of an X-Fix and an internal nail. We're gonna be breaking down the pros, cons, and everything in between, backed by the latest research and real world patient outcomes. But before we do, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Nailed Legs, a prospective limb lengthening patient who wrote the article that I'm basing this video on. All right, so first up, let's talk about our lengthening device contenders. So we have the external fixators, which include two different categories, the circular ring fixators like the classic Lazaroff and the hexapods like the Taylor spatial frame, which have unparalleled ability for deformity correction of the bones. Although it's at the cost of having a big bulky frame on your leg, which makes wearing clothing uncomfortable and much harder, as well as it's much more noticeable by people around you. Also, the pins that insert from the outside in through the skin to the muscle all the way into the bone, you know, to fixate the device to your leg, it causes what's known as pin site infections, which usually require consistent cleaning of the area. And even then, it's common for patients to still run a course of antibiotics to mitigate a more serious deep bone infection. Then you have category number two, the monorails, also known as the monolateral external fixators, where the device fixation takes place on one side of the limb. Although these fixators don't take up as much real estate on your leg, they do lose a lot of the ability for deformity correction of your bones, and they can still cause the pin site infections, as well as some other issues that we're gonna discuss later. The next lengthening device is the LON, which stands for lengthening over nail. It's a hybrid device that combines the pros and cons of an external fixator, but it also comes with an internal trauma nail that has significant weight bearing capacity, allowing for faster removal of the external frame once the lengthening of the bone is complete. And finally, we have the magnetic and motorized telescopic intramedullary nails like the Precise and Fitbone systems. At first glance, they appear to outclass the external fixators and LON devices due to their convenient yet precise control of lengthening, all of which takes place inside the canal of your long bones, meaning it's not gonna impede your physical therapy rehab or stretching, and it's not gonna be visible to those around you so you can live life and lengthen worry-free, especially if you have a nail with sufficient weight-bearing capacity. Hint, hint. Okay, so now we're gonna check out the research. A retrospective study that examines CFD patients, which stands for congenital femoral deficiency, which is essentially a leg length discrepancy of the femur bone. The researchers compared 35 total patients, 11 of which had the precise two internal nail, seven patients with a monolateral external fixator, and the remaining 17 were treated with the Taylor spatial frame hexapod external ring fixator. They found no significant difference in the lengthening ability of the devices amongst the groups. That means that they can all help correct your discrepancy or make you taller. However, the internal nail group showed statistically lower lengthening and consolidation indexes than the monolateral and external ring fixator groups. Now, the lengthening index was stated to be the time from surgery to full weight bearing, and the consolidation index is the duration of consolidation or bone healing phase. This means that the internal nail method could be more efficient for bone healing and have fewer overall complications during the lengthening phase, uh, at least for those without any axial deviation, which is basically when your bone is misaligned. Now, the study does go on to further compare both the intramedullary nails and the external fixators. For example, early versions of the precise nail face setbacks with you know, mechanical failures and hardware breakdowns uh, and a few infections. However, the later versions like the Precise 2.2, which we currently have, and the soon-to-be Precise Max, uh, have significantly you know, enhanced their strength and reliability, addressing these issues head-on, um, and they reduced a lot of complications to a minimum or none at all. Now, when we look deeper at the external fixators, they offer a lot of adjustability when it comes to deformity correction. However, they still have a higher complication rate, including superficial and the more severe yet rare deep bone infections. So I don't know about you guys, but I know that I am a visual learner, so I went ahead and made a chart to help compare the external fixators and LON to the internal nails to help highlight the main differences between these lengthening devices in a simpler way. So here we go. All right guys, so this is the lengthening device comparison chart where we're gonna be comparing the three different lengthening devices that we've been talking about. The intramedullary lengthening nails like the Precise or Fitbone, uh, the external ring fixators like the Taylor Spatial Frame Hexapods or the Classic Elizaroff, and then finally the monolateral external fixators like the monorails here. Um, but it can also be applied to lengthen, lengthening over nails because it's a similar device, okay? So we have the different categories that we're gonna be comparing in this column, and then we're gonna rank them low, moderate, or high for each of the devices and how they relate, okay? So starting off, we have the pen and or incision site infections, 
And for an internal nail, that's going to be relatively low. Why? Because once the incision sites close up after about seven to 10 days, you know, the chance of bacteria getting in and causing havoc is very low because your skin has closed up. Um, you know, however, with an external fixator like a ring fixator or a monolateral fixator, it's going to be really high because these pins keep the skin open to outside invaders. Uh, you know, they can just go down this metal right into your inside of your, your leg and you have to constantly keep the ins pin sites clean or you're going to get a skin site infection. And it's almost guaranteed, in fact. I mean, all the patients that I talk to with these things, they're always on antibiotics, which you're going to post, probably have to run a course of antibiotics just to kind of void off a serious infection um and they're always cleaning their pin sites so if you don't want to deal with pin site infections then you know the internal nail is way, way to go but uh that's definitely something that you want to see that it's low for uh, an internal nail but it's high for ring fixators and monolateral fixators as well now when it comes to deformity correction it's really low for an internal nail and that's even with using things like blocking screws to kind of correct mild axle deviation which means it can collect, correct a little bit of varus or valgus meaning you know uh, bow legs or knock knees however if the degree of deviation is too great then the surgeon's going to want to lead on something like an external ring fixator or monolateral fixator even is better than an internal nail uh, but ring fixator being the best because it has a multi-planar deformity correction cap capability uh, so it can really correct any type of axle deviation or deformity there um, so uh, low for internal nails high for ring fixators and moderate for monorails and you know LON so um, now when we talk about mobility with the device we're talking about the patient's ability to move around without the device getting in the way so the mobility capacity for an internal nail is very high because it's inside of your bone so it's not even getting in the way right so it's inside here it's fixated in with screws so it's just as if you didn't have limb lengthening in the first place it's just you know doing the lengthening from the inside out however with a ring fixator it's very low because this frame is on the outside your leg would be in here and this frame is on the outside here so it gets in way it gets in the way for things like clothing doing physical therapy if you're sleeping at night, watch out if something snags on it because you're going to feel that. Uh, so it definitely is taking up a big you know, amount of real estate on your leg and it does get in the way. So it does limit your mobility. Um, and it's a little bit less. It's moderate for monorail because it's only on one side, monolateral, right? And um, that's the same thing for lengthening over nail, uh, at least for a lot of clinics that use that way. Now, when it comes to visibility of the device, um, it's not even applicable for an internal nail. Why? Because it's inside of your leg, so you won't see it. You probably won't feel it um, that much um, so the visibility is zero for that however it's very high like we said for the external fixator because it's outside of your leg from all angles it's a it has this huge circumference so it's going to be very visible to the people around you and then a monorail is going to be moderate because it's only on one side of your leg so a lot of times it's on the lateral side monolateral <laughs> um, and uh, yeah so it definitely uh, people have to sometimes cut slits in their pants uh, just to kind of get around with them and um, you know it, it, it is partially visible but not as visible as an external ring fixator. Now bone healing based on the data that we had in the study it's relatively high for an internal nail. Why is that? Maybe because they ream the bone and it causes bony fragments. I don't know. I don't really understand why it heals better for an internal nail but uh, it does um, and then with a ring fixator it was moderate and same thing for a uh, monolateral fixator. Um, now whether or not it's higher for a lengthening over nail, I'm not even sure. There wasn't data on that. However, I'm just going off of monolateral over monorails and uh, ring fixators and internal nails. So high for them, moderate, moderate for the other two. All right, so when it comes to patient preference, uh, the internal nails are typically going to win out here. Why? Because it's just typically more convenient for the patient. They have more mobility. They don't get you know skin site infections. It's less visible. It's inside your bones. Um, your bones heal really well. It's usually less painful, and we can go down the list. But uh, yeah, so patients. Are, I mean, it's also the latest and greatest uh, link in lengthening technology on the market. Um, so typically, companies understand this, and you know the patients are going to prefer and demand what is the best. All right. Now with ring fixators, they still work. They still do the job in terms of lengthening. However, patients don't prefer them as much because they're more painful. They leave, you know, greater scarring, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, and less mobility and everything else that we talked about. And the same thing with the monolateral. Um, typically, you know, uh, 
they won't prefer them as much as uh, internal nail. Okay, now, like I just said, for scarring, it's going to be minimal scarring for an internal nail. These little incisions just to put in the screws, the nail itself, the surgeons are really, really particular about being, you know, very careful with how big the scars are and patients, you know, who don't want a lot of scarring, internal nails are going to be the way to go, okay? Whereas with a ring fixator and a monolateral fixator, they're going to leave a lot of scars, especially with a circular ring fixator. Um, but, you know, they still get the job done, but they do leave a lot of scarring and they're deep scarring. A lot of times the monolateral fixator on the femur specifically, they're going to leave these puncturing through the fascia and a lot of times they can turn into muscle hernias, which aren't really aesthetic or, you know, appealing. Um, and a lot of times you have to go back and get corrective surgery to fix that, that fascia and, you know, keep it tethered down. Cost? It's going to be very high for an internal nail. Why? Because it's more convenient to the patient. It's, whereas it's going to be less expensive for an internal ring fixator and a monolateral fixator because a lot of times they can actually even reuse these devices. So uh, when you recycle a device and use it again, it's usually cheaper, right? Not to mention that they are the more obsolete type of device on the market. When it comes to weight bearing cap uh, capacity, well, when we had things like the original Fitbone and the original Precise, they were really low. They were barely breaking 100 pounds uh, for both legs for the original versions. However, with the new weight-bearing versions coming out, <clears throat> this has been greatly increased, and they're going to be more leveled with things like the ring fixator and the monorails, which are high because these pins support and stabilize the bone from the top and the bottom, so you can technically weight bear throughout the lengthening process. But like we said, with the current mechanical nails on the market and the upcoming motorized um, and magnetic uh, weight bearing nails, it's going to allow for patients to weight bear during the lengthening process a lot more. So this is going to be pretty much an even column of high weight bearing, um, at least for those who opt for the new nails. Okay. Now, when it comes to pain, it's typically really, really low for an internal nail, at least after the post-surgical inflammatory phase which is like about two to three weeks when the pain drops off a cliff it turns into a waiting game which yes you'll still get some lengthening pains which is typically coming from the muscles being sore and tight and stiff and then sometimes the nerves getting irritated or you know things like that but you know you're not going to have a lot of bone pain because this 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 rod is inside of your bone it's fixated pretty you know compactly all in there uh whereas with this external ring fixator <clears throat> If you're sleeping and you, you know, roll over, you know, and you or you snag on something when you're walking, it can cause a jarring <laughs> sensation going from the outside into your bone. So you can feel that pain, and it'll be very uncomfortable at least until it dies down. Same thing with a monolateral fixator. Even though it's less likely you'll hit it on, you know, all the sides and just one side, it still can happen because it is this frame is on the outside going in. Okay, so pain-wise, internal nail is very low ring fixators high pain uh at least the uh, circular fixators being the highest uh so yeah that's basically how we're going to kind of rank all these different devices so as, so as you can see having a frame can significantly impact your daily life and mobility meanwhile internal nails are great for their lower complication rates faster recovery and less impact on your daily activities despite having the more invasive initial procedure when the surgeon actually has to insert the the nail into the bone. Also, I wanna talk a little bit more about patient preferences. So although the external fixators are more effective for complex deformity reconstruction, uh, you know, patients typically prefer internal nails for their comfort, their low visibility or no visibility, and improved recovery. In fact, unless you have some sort of axial deviation or deformity that needs to be corrected with an external fixator, I personally think that they should be made obsolete and phased out for limited discrepancies and cosmetic stature lengthening. Why? Because the issues and complications caused, especially from monolateral frames, like the one used in the LON method, do not outweigh the inconvenience and the risks that the patient faces. So how do you choose the right method for you? Well, it's all about balancing the pros and cons with your personal lengthening goals, but you know my stance, as well as the general census of limb lengthening patients and even some top surgeons, so you can decide for yourself. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this video helped clarify some of the confusion between the different methods of lengthening devices as well as their pros and cons. If you found it helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. And until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace.